our key text for this uh, book, Job chapter 33. We read a passage and then we go to God in prayer. Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 18. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from men. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. <coughs> Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we praise you and thank you for this passage of your word. Make alive this word, even unto us this morning. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit, who continue to pour forth his life, his light, and all the riches of the inheritance of Jesus Christ into our lives. And in the name of Jesus we pronounce, O oh God, in the name of Jesus that your light shine over each heart right now. In the name of Jesus we pronounce a blessing of your light, the enlightenment that will take place in our hearts and in our minds right now. We proclaim Jesus as Lord in this place. We proclaim your kingdom is here. And everyone who draws near to this place will lose every right and authority to the Lord Jesus Christ. Take every thought, every desire, every one of our imaginations to the throne of Jesus. And we welcome you, Jesus, to be enthroned in our midst. To be lifted high in our hearts. We will give you all our hearts adoration. All our hearts praises and worship. Seal your blessings upon our lives. Let your face shine over this place even this morning. Thank you Father God for your word. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We worship you. We thank you for the advocacy of the blood of Jesus. It's available to us even this morning. Let the blood be upon our spirits, souls and bodies. Your righteousness prevail, O God. We give you all glory, worship and honor. In Jesus' name, Amen. We are on the interpretation of dreams and uh, <coughs> we have call upon each one of you to try to write down some of your dreams for these sessions and some of you have done it we have only two dreams this morning to interpret but uh, as you seek to write them down there are a few other points that I'd like you to take note that will give a uh, more accurate interpretation for your dreams Notice in this passage here that it says that a dream is God's second, second means of communication to us. It says, Yea, God spoke once, nay, twice, it says here. Job 33, verse 14. God speaks in one way, another, man doesn't perceive it. In a dream, he tells us, in a vision of the night. Now the scripture in verse 14 implies that God has spoken in other ways before he speaks in a dream. And there are two major ways in which God seeks to direct our life, uh, besides the spectacular. One is the conscience that God has placed. This is a general scripture. In other words, it's not especially 
uh, applying to the believers in the new covenant. It is a statement of fact made that this is God's direction to every man born on this planet earth, whether they know God or not, whether they have a personal relationship, whether they have come into a covenant relationship with God or not, whether they've been born again, spirit filled, etc. This is not that uh, a verse that applies only to those in the covenant. It applies to all men and women in general, mankind in general. Of course, those who have come into the covenant have more extra special leadings. They have a special phone line with God. Uh, here is a verse that applies to general men. And it says that God has spoken in some ways to all men. And uh, we can tie that to number one, the conscience. Every man and woman born upon this earth has a conscience. And through the conscience, God seeks to direct our lives in the right path. Every one of us are born into a pathway of life. From the time we grow, we are supposed to walk along that pathway. And sometimes people have said that, uh, Oh, if God only directs us, if, if God only leads us. The thing that we need to realize is that God has placed a lot of roadblocks. God has placed enough roadblocks to prevent us from going out of the way. Two major ones. The first one is the conscience. Every time you move outside of the way that God wants you to move, the roadblock of your conscience screams. But of course, if we persistently go against that roadblock, that whole roadblock becomes dismantled. The conscience is hardened. It doesn't work anymore. But the second major method in which God directs our life is through dreams. Everyone who is born into this planet earth has dreams. Whether they know God or not, they have dreams. Notice the purpose for it. The purpose for dreams is to turn us from pride, turn us from destruction, it says, there are several things listed here. Number one, pride. Number two, destruction. And number three, his life from perishing by the sword from circumstances that will destroy you. The sword symbolizes circumstances, symbolizes war. Circumstances that destroy people's life. From being destroyed and uh, from going to the pit means eternal uh, damnation. So, God directs us and prevents men from being destroyed or destroying themselves. So dreams are important. As we look at it, number one, we're going to focus on this fact that a dream signifies a warning to our lives. And uh, I was just reading one, uh, this book by one reader. And uh, he came back for a missionary journey. And uh, he understood the interpretation of dreams. And he was busy on a missionary journey for about a year. Going from place to place. And when he got back from his missionary journey, he had a dream. In the dream, he, he, wa he, went, he was approaching a little plane. And as he approached the plane, he saw the pilot. And when he saw the pilot... The pilot was like in a coma. And then he woke up. Because he understood the interpretation of dreams, he was frightened. He was shocked. Because the interpretation is that he, there's something that pilot represents him. He was seeing himself. And the pilot represented a part of him that was sensitive to the direction of God. The pilot's life is in a coma. Not dead yet, but in a coma. And the dream was warning him, telling him that he is being too busy. He, he, has, he has been too occupied with things that he has not taken time to nurture that part of himself. And so he really started spending more time with God. And then he had a second dream. In the second dream, he saw 
he, he was like, uh, he saw a whole team of doctors and nurses. And they were all rushing to, to minister or to administer medical treatment to a man. And that man was on the lower floor of the house, like a, a, a several stories in the house. And a man was on the lower floor of the house. And uh, they were all administering uh, medicine and they're going to perform an operation. Just as they were going to do that, and he was there, and the man's condition was quite critical, and then suddenly the man woke up. And just as the man woke up, he woke up from his dream. He was quite frightened by that dream, because he understood the interpretation. That lower floor represents, in his dream, not all the time, his physical man. And God was trying to tell him, through that dream and warn him, that if he doesn't change his way and his path, he will open himself for physical sicknesses. In other words, he's heading towards that road. His body is falling sick. And through the dream, God is warning him. And uh, he had several other trips that are up in line, and he quickly cancelled them. And he had a medical checkup, and the doctors confirmed that his whole system is an exhaustion. And if he had pursued on, he would have fallen sick. It's amazing that dreams are a warning. A warning that, a secondary warning. Where, when we are awake, we have the conscience and the voice of human spirit teaching us and telling us what is right and wrong. If we obey it, you know, the, our dreams don't have to warn us in that area, it can tell us of other things. But when it's ignored, the urgency increases, so the dream is a second line of defense for us. That God has implanted for us. That will warn us. The emphasis in Job 33, the emphasis on Job 33 is that the dream consists of a warning. Now, as we have explained, 95% of the dreams possibly is subjective. If you see somebody in your dream, it doesn't mean that God has something to say in your dream about that person. Only 5% of your dreams are objective. Objective means that, that if you see uh, Tom, Dick and Harry in your dream, then God is trying to tell you something about Tom, Dick and Harry. That will be the 5%. But 95% of the dreams are subjective. That means that if you see Tom, Dick and Harry in your dream, and a subjective dream, it refers to what Tom, Dick and Harry represents to you. So when you wake up, it doesn't mean that you call Tom and then you call Dick and you call Harry and say, I got a dream about you. My dream reveals this about you. No, it not necessarily reveals something about them. It reveals something about himself. Let's take an example of uh, another person who had this dream. And uh, in the dream, he saw one of his old classmates whom he has never seen for umpteen years. And he wake up suddenly. Something, what is God telling me about this old classmate? Never seen this classmate before. And as he prayed, the Lord began to show what this old classmate represents. It was not an objective dream, it was a subjective this old classmate, he remembered, was a dogmatic person. Argumentative and dogmatic. And why did he remember it? And as he pondered over it, he remembered that just the week before, he had a strong argument with one of his friends. And that dream was trying to tell him that the dogmatic nature in his life was coming up and it had to be dealt with. 
See, it was not an objective dream about his friend. It was him. But it's funny how our human spirit tried to communicate to our soul. It used images. That friend that represents something was communicated in a picture form. See, dreams are picture communications and we have to understand what they represent. And last week we talked about how uh, each symbol is different to different people. So we want to focus on this fact that a dream carries a warning. That is why we're teaching this series. For God's Spirit is saying that there are those who are ignoring their conscience and their human spirit. And God is put, uh, putting alive, bringing alive the secondary line of defense for their life before they go outside of His will in dreams. You can be sure if they ignore that secondary line of defense, they will move out of God's will completely. And then they will taste the consequences of the sword, perhaps the pit, and the pride of life that brings its sorrows before the attention comes to them. Not all sicknesses are caused by uh, sins or disobediences. They are natural causes too. But we do realize that sometimes a person falls sick because they are going on the wrong direction and they have opened doors to devils or to natural circumstances and their sickness brings them to the attention that, and to re-examine what they are doing. But they don't have to go to that stage. You don't have to go to the stage where you lose your leg, you lose your arm, you get in an accident, you almost die before you say, what am I doing with my life? We don't have to reach that stage. But it's sad that some people will allow that. See, God has pla- placed roadblocks. Evil doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil. God has His roadblocks of His inward voice, inward conscience and dreams. We have to pay attention to the dreams. Get a dream book. Get a dream book. Record your dreams. And these are the sessions where we want to teach you how to interpret your own dreams. Now let's look at the book of Daniel and see some other areas in which we want to show how to interpret your own dreams. The book of Daniel. In Daniel... Chapter 2, verse 29. We all remember Nebuchadnezzar's dream. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what will come to pass after this, and he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will be. The second area that we Looking at the first is a dream carries a warning. The second is the fact that before you interpret a dream, you must understand the circumstances or the set of of, uh, things that took place before the dream. In other words, if you are writing your dream for us to interpret in this session, if possible, write down what was occurring in your life about that time. The very day or the week before. In other words, what was going on in your life about that time? Then they will give us an accuracy of interpretation to 100%. If you don't put that down, the accuracy may be reduced to 80%. So to interpret dreams accurately, of course, the best person will be yourself, except for where they show your blind spots. (coughs) That will be difficult. But in order to accurately interpret a dream, we need to note down (coughs) what took place in Nebuchadnezzar's life. The night before he had that dream, he was thinking about what is going to come in the next kingdom. What will take place after he dies and his kingdom passes away. And he slept with that thought in his mind. And that was important for the dream reveals his thoughts, that what he was thinking about. 
So the setting for the dream, the setting, the background, it could be things that took place a week, it could be took things that dominate your life. They dominate your life. And uh, example, there was another dream I read about uh, in a different book. Somebody else read that dream. And uh, it was a lady. And this lady has uh, a tremendous uh, pressure in her family life. Her husband was not fully in the Lord, although supposed to be in the Lord. And she has a very unhappy family life. She has been, in a sense, abused physically. And there was this bitterness and unhappiness that was in the background. Now, seeing the background, we can interpret the dream. And this was a dream that she had, a, quite a long dream. This was somebody overseas, right? So don't start looking around. And she dreamed that she, she saw this, uh, uh, she was in this hospital. And it seems that there were musicians who were sick. And the hospital was running around trying to minister to these musicians. She was one of the nurses. Just running to get all these beds ready. And in a dream there was this one doctor who was gentle, firm and kind. Whom she liked very much in the dream. And uh, she remember in that dream the kindness. And then as she was arranging this bed, this doctor comes and uh, tells her to hurry up and uh, for the first time between she and the doctor she feels a strain she feels a bit hurt because she feels that she wants to make it very clean and make sure no germs and, and no termites and nothing comes as these uh, ginger musicians are going to come and lie down on this, on this bed then suddenly the scene changed Although in the first part of the dream, she has sort of, she really loved the doctor. Doctor was not her husband. Then a dream changed where she was in a, on the phone. And uh, she was talking to this doctor. This doctor was about to fly somewhere on an aeroplane. But somehow in that dream, she knew that the plane was going to crash because there's something wrong with the engine. And so over the phone, she was saying to the doctor, I love you. I love you. Do you love Jesus too? And the doctor says, yes, I do. No, I know Jesus as you do know Jesus. And uh, just as she was saying that, the plane crashed and the doctor died. <laughs> Interesting dream. <laughs> then, subsequently, she woke up. There are a few other things that she woke up. we summarizing a dream. It's a long dream, two page. With that understanding of background, this was what the Lord was saying through that dream. Her relationship with her husband was such that the music in her life was dying. And her husband was killing the music in her life. Taking the joy and the music out of her life. Now that doctor represents not someone else but a part of her being. A part of her life. Her the firm but gentle part that was dying. And somehow, in her circumstances, she was allowing that part of her to die. The part of her that was creative, that was firm but gentle. 
And the dream was warning her that if she allowed that part of her to die, in the end, it would destroy her marriage. That was an important dream. And uh, throughout the dream, which I did not mention, she was afraid that her husband would find out about the doctor. So the dream was revealing that there was a part of her being. You see, we may not realize it, but our, our emotions and our will and our intellect, our soul and our spirit has many, many intricate parts. Can you imagine in your physical body, you have the heart, the kidneys, the, the spleen, the pancreas, the uh, small intestine, the large intestines, all the intricate organs that are within us, the liver, etc. And they all must function in balance. In balance. Every, if, if there's something wrong in your heart, it will affect all your other organs. Something wrong in your liver, it will affect all your physical organs. All our physical organs must function in balance for optimum physical health. Do not think that your spirit and soul have only one part or three parts. There are a lot of, not in the same form as physical, but there are a lot of attributes of our soul and spirit. We have to balance, for example, between authority and gentleness. Those talk about different parts of our soul development, different parts of our spirit development. We have to balance so many of these forces. We have to balance between being tender-hearted and uh, easy to cry and weep, and yet an ability not to be emotional. Can you see the balance there? Almost everything within us must be held in balance just as our physical organs in our body must be held in balance. And so sometimes in a dream, they are in subjective areas, they are revealing imbalances in your soul, imbalances in your makeup, in your personality. For example, this author of this dream book by Mark, uh, Mark Wiggler's friend, in a dream, he he saw this policeman and this policeman illegally entered a home with a gun and in the dream he saw it and he phoned the police station knowing that it was illegal and in the dream another person came a policewoman and uh, then the dream was such that the policeman and the policewoman were facing each other with the gun looks like the wild west Suddenly the story changed. The scene changed. He was now in the house and he was facing his mother. His mother was holding a gun, he was holding a gun and he shot his mother. And he woke up. Nightmare. What was the interpretation? The day before, or a few days before, he, he, he had a quarrel with his son. His son was being educated in the university and had come back with all kinds of doubts and all kinds of questions on the faith in Christianity. And he had just had a good scolding with the son and his son in a temple walked out on him. Then he had that dream. See, the background is important. He did not understand the interpretation for some time. And the slowly it dawned on him. And you notice in that dream there were two authoritative figures. Policeman and a policewoman. And uh, they symbolizes the authority that has been built into him. His background was that he came, he was brought up in a very, by a very strict father. And a very gentle mother. And in his life, the dream was revealing that the gentle part of him, see, his mother was not that he killed his mother, or that it was a prophecy he killed his mother, but it was revealing that that motherly part of him that was influencing him from his soul was dying. And that somehow, 
the dream reveal that, that this harmony between his authoritative part and his gentle part within his side, the conflict in his own soul was resulting in a conflict with his own son. Isn't that amazing? If he had been in harmony with his own being, where he knew how to be firm but gentle, he may never had a quarrel with his son. No doubt his son may be like that and influence all these things. He may have been able to deal with the family situation better so his son would not have to walk out on him. So can you see that the dream was trying to show that the problem he was having outside, externally, in his family, was a result of his own inner conflict. In his own soul, there was in this harmony. So dreams are important. They are warnings. They tell us things that are not whole in our life. Just as if your physical body is sick, you may have fever, you may have all kinds of symptoms, a running nose, any, everything. Your body gives you symptoms. Your soul gives you symptoms in your dreams. Your dreams reveal problems in your soul. Disharmony in your soul. And if you pay attention to what God is saying, through our dreams, warning us of extremes in our life, we will have wholeness. An inner wholeness inside us. And as you explain... In, in interpreting a dream, we have to look at the background. What was the background of your dreams? What did you go through during that time? What were the things facing you? These are important for an accurate interpretation of dreams. And uh, let me just take one here. And uh, now this is a dream which one of you have. And uh, it's, I could interpret this about 80% because the background is not given. But I know the person and I know uh, roughly the things. But it's only 80% because I do not know what the person is thinking and going through during the time he had a dream. Right? So here's the dream. <coughs> it says... I dream of a place where there was a party. In this party, a vampire was loose. In disguise. After a few victims, I knew who he was. The dream was strange because there was a swimming pool at the party I was swimming with a girl who could be a future victim interesting so please write more on your dreams and pass it up after the swim I told some people that I knew who he was and that we needed a plan to trap him. Not mentioned here, the bait must be the girl. Then the scene changed. The vampire is not at the side of the pool sitting down. And I told a pastor who was there, by eye contact, that he was the one. Interesting dream. Third sin. Remember you say a dream has sins. Third sin. New dream related to my work. And it says, Oh, he was, the person who dream is making phone calls, mostly from public booths to my clients as my friends wait for me in a car parked at the side of a road. So now the interpretation, 80%. Right? We don't quite know the background. Notice there are three scenes in the dream. 
the key to the interpretation is the last scene. They are all one dream. The dream is the Lord through the dream trying to tell this brother, person who dreams, about his job, about his work. They are all one dream. There is a, a law interpretation. You see, you, you need details. It's important to have certain details in your dream. Because those details are the key to the interpretation. You notice in Daniel's dream about... Uh, uh, in Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's second dream, the tree and some of the descriptions of the tree apply directly to Nebuchadnezzar. So, of course, the tree is Nebuchadnezzar. Those details help you to link them together. So the third scene tells us that these three dreams are the same. Just like uh, Pharaoh's dream interpreted by jo- Joseph, they were, two dream- they were two dreams, two separate dreams and two different scenes. But they have the same message. Now the second dream has a clearer direct application because they see the, the sheaves of corn. So it applies to famine. The first is a bit more picturesque with the, with the cows, thin cows and the fat cows. So the third scene is the key to the interpretation. <clears throat> all, three, all three scenes refer to the work or the job. Now in the first dream here, the swimming pool and the party represents a public place. A public place. And... Uh, <clears throat> The vampire symbolizes evil that is there but hidden. But somehow in this dream, this person recognizes it. So, it has reference to the person's work, the person's job, the person's project, the person's business. That somehow, as he is right now in whatever job, he or she is in this person recognizes that there is a person or persons who will in the end destroy the whole business okay is the image coming out through, through picture form the girl in this dream represents the new business and a new project that this person has launched into. See, he was swimming with the girl. That was an important key to show that this picture of the girl is not a prophecy that she was going to find a a wife who is in danger. (laughs) Right? But it is speaking about one of his business or his business at the time that he's involved with. He's swimming in it. In other words, he is now involved in that very business in which this quote-unquote vampire or a person or something that he knows is going to destroy that whole business is still there. In the second scene, it tells that this person has sought spiritual help for his business. Either to counsel or in prayer. And in his spiritual prayer life or, spi- uh, or counsel, whichever way, a pastor represents spiritual help. And through that spiritual help, he is able to detect and he could pinpoint exactly what is, what is the thing that will destroy that business. Now, come to the third part of the dream. The third scene. Notice that there is an emphasis on him using the public booth. Now there are a few details missing. It says the people waiting in the car. You're not sure from this dream whether they were the driver and he was a passenger and they were waiting for him or he was a driver and he left them in the back seat and he was was phoning and they were waiting. He was the driver of the car. Right? This detail is missing here. But it will help give a little bit more clarity. Uh, Here... (coughs) Without that, we'll attempt to give some understanding interpretation. It's speaking about how that 
he is launching into this other project. All these other friends of his, we don't know what, what friends, assuming business partners or people involved in his business. These are others who are in his car. In other words, they will be in a way indirectly involved with his business. But it seems that he is the one who has to move out, to go forth. And uh, the public phone represents a public place. This dream seems to be saying and is a warning as well as a certain direction. Not all dreams have direction. Usually dreams only have warning. The direction will come from our spiritual walk with God. As we are going to see afterwards. Now this dream is saying to this uh, person here who have this dream. That he is involved in a business at the moment that is in danger from certain areas. And the dream is warning him that there is danger. He has picked it up in his normal Christian life and his inward voice and his conscience. He knows it. Now notice in a dream nothing is done. There is nothing done about the danger yet. So the dream is revealing a danger in the realm of his business. He needs to pay heed to that. That then. Danger is such it can destroy his whole business, his whole project. And uh, <clears throat> the third area of the dream is just, the third scene is just to reveal what this other two is trying to say. It gives the clearer uh, picture form. But the direction is not so clear except that it's, it's saying that he has to do something about that. So what he has to do about that, that goes back to the word and his other direction from God. As we see here how a dream is a warning. It could be a warning about your personal life where perhaps you are neglecting one area. We have to balance between spirit, soul and body. When you begin to neglect one area of your soul, one area of your physical life or whichever, your dream will warn you. If you are sensitive, your conscious mind your conscience and your inward voice will warn you could hear it in your conscious state. But when you ignore it, as we usually do, because when you're, when you're not sensitive to certain things and imbalances, because you're too involved, then it comes out in your dream. Secondary line of defense. And so that dream is a warning about dangers in that person's business and project. It needs to take note of, deals with, before it happens. Before it takes place. There is a danger there. So then confirms, as we have mentioned here, the two points we have covered so far, that number one, a dream carries a warning. Subjective dream. The warning in certain areas. Pay heed to them. And second, secondly, the background. The background is vitally important. If, if that same dream is dreamt by another person with a different background, we may have a totally different interpretation. As you see here, Nebuchadnezzar was lying down and thinking about the things of the future. Then he had a dream, so that, that helps us to streamline that interpretation to one area about those things that were disturbing him and troubling his thoughts. And a dream carries a revelation in those areas. Now notice here in the book of Daniel, <coughs> chapter 4, in Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. Just to cover a point we touch on, but just note it down. There's number 3. We are seeking to teach how to interpret dreams. As they say, dreams carry a warning. We must take note of that. Number two, the, uh, the background before the dream is important. That background could be something that troubles your life for years, but it's still there. And in that case, you may have recurring dreams in the same area. So remember, recurring dreams can tell you about certain things that have been really uh, in your life, deep-rooted, that you have to deal with. Recurring you don't deal with it, it's going to endanger your life. Before it takes place, your dreams are warning you. So 
So dreams tells us something of our background that we're going through. Third area, uh, details. Do not neglect the details of dreams. If you have a dream about a car, you know, and you're inside, it's important to find out whether you're in front or at the back. Things like that. And then, things, details, like for example, the clothes you wear. Clothes you wear. Uh, like in the dream that I talked to you about, that, uh, that, uh, the woman, right, who, with the doctor who crashed. In that dream, she remembered she was in her normal clothes, not in her work clothes. And that, that is important because that dream is trying to reveal a defect in her life not in her working life, but in her normal daily life. In her everyday life, the problem is occurring. So the clothes we wear are important in the dream. The de- de- these details are important to interpret and streamline what the dream is trying to tell us. The clothes you wear, or what you have, what you don't have. And uh, certain pictures, even children's dreams are very important. Like uh, one child dream, dream of how uh, uh, he was on a railway track and he was <coughs> lying on a railway track and a train was coming. That was a nightmare. Train was coming. Now, that dream is important. It's telling us that that train represents that kind of uh, strict, rigid training that the child was having train that is always on the track it tells us that in the upbringing of the child there is no wholeness and somehow the parents are too strict and that strictness and rigid military discipline in their home was destroying that child's wholeness and if nothing is done that child's soul will be damaged And the child will have problems in his later life. Or slant in his personality. See, we influence as adults, personalities of children. And when children have those dreams, it's important we understand the interpretation because they may reveal things that we are putting wrongly into their life. Now when when that that boy has that dream, it's, it's telling us something about our family. Something that needs to be done. We need to talk to the parents and say, Hey, your, your bringing of the child is too strict. The child needs uh, other, other, to learn gentleness for his soul to be formed properly. So dreams are important. Details are important. And what they represent. Here in the book of Daniel, <coughs> chapter 4, says here, that uh, notice the the tree in verse 11 chapter 4 is 11 <clears throat> the tree grew and became strong its sight reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of the earth <clears throat> verse 12 its leaves were lovely <clears throat> its fruit abundant and in it was food for all the beasts of the field found shade under it and notice that while Nebuchadnezzar had that dream, suddenly the tree becomes a he. In verse 14 and 15. There was a watcher that came down from heaven and said, Chop down the tree, cut off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the bees get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stem and roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the bees notice the sudden change the tree becomes a him details like this we must not miss and uh, then there are other details like verse 17 this decision is, is by the decree of the watchers and a sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of man, gives it to whomever he wills, and sets away it 
the lowest of men. Now, that final part becomes important in the interpretation because it talks about a king, a ruler. And Nebuchadnezzar was the one who has a dream. Logically, it points straight to him. The moment Daniel heard it, he knew the interpretation. It was quite a simple interpretation for this. Such is a skill that we could train ourselves in interpretation. And when we hear a dream, we could sense what it is, what it's talking about, and the warning it carries. Now that dream was not supposed to take place. That dream was just a warning saying, Nebuchadnezzar, if you don't change your direction, that's how you will end up. It's a warning. It was not supposed to take place at all. As a result, for one year he was walking, he changed a little bit. He walked humbly. But he forgot after a year, his old self came back and he fell. He got into this judgment. Nebuchadnezzar was not one who knew what to do. And that is, that is the fourth part where the dream alone doesn't give you enough direction. The dream alone doesn't give you enough direction. Daniel, with his spiritual experience and his spiritual principles, was able to tell Nebuchadnezzar what to do. In uh, verse 27. Now verse 27 is, is not from a dream. Verse 27, the advice in verse 27 came directly from Daniel's life. It says here, Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. In other words, he is saying, Nebuchadnezzar, unless you break off those things yourself, you yourself will be broken. Daniel counsel, O king, break off your sins. Remove those things in your life. They are going to stumble yourself. And then he tells him advice that only the Bible can give. Be righteous. Be merciful. And these things won't happen. So dream is a warning. But the direction we still need to get from the word of the living God. And our walk with God. The first time Nebuchadnezzar also didn't pay much heed to his first dream. In uh, Daniel chapter 2, in his first dream... After Daniel interpreted the dream, which represents all the different empires that follow after Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar did not apply the dream for himself. Because that dream was so frightening, he must have woken up and forgotten it. Because he saw this huge big statue. And I could see the, the, in a dream, he zoomed on the head and he saw it of gold. And slowly came down to silver and then bronze and then bronze and clay or iron and clay. It slowly came down. And then just as when he was the dream, he was looking at the feet, there's this huge stone that came and knocked the statue's feet and it expanded. And in the dream, the stone expanded and expanded, must have been coming nearer and nearer. Nebuchadnezzar, and he got up. <laughs> Big stone going to roll on him. Frightening dream. Nightmare to him. It all represents empires. Now that stone represents the kingdom of God. The reign and rule of the Lord Jesus Christ that will come. And it did not humble Nebuchadnezzar. In fact, immediately after that, in chapter 3, because of that dream, he built that, Nebuch he built that golden statue. 
of himself. That dream didn't help him at all. In fact, he made use of the dream in a wrong way. He built a big, huge golden statue and asked everybody to bow down. These are called blind spots. If he took that dream correctly, that dream would have humbled him. Knowing that his kingdom was nothing compared to the kingdom of God. But he took the dream the wrong way. Just like many people, when they go to a place or when they meet people, they only seek to hear what they want. Not what, will, what they actually need that will change their life. And sometimes people go to others for advice. They are not really going to others for advice. They only want to hear what that person say that they can agree with. They can confirm what they want to do themselves. Not really what they need. Not really what God wants of them. It's funny because many, many years ago, before we started this church, and I used to fellowship with different Christian leaders, and uh, I knew one uh, person, businessman, who always didn't believe in large churches. Always think small. Think small is good. And uh, never believe in huge large churches. It was a necessity. All the work and all this administration, all these things, give all kinds of reasons. Of course, you could always intellectualize everything you want. You could intellectualize anything and you could give reasons, pro and con for everything. That's why we cannot rule our life with our intellect. We can only rule and reign our life through the spirit. Because with the intellect, you'll find equal points here and equal points there and you're still stuck, still made. But the funny thing is that this person visited Cho Yonggi's church. And after that visit, he came back and he said, even Cho Yonggi confirmed that this large church you know, is, is not the way it should be. I was wondering, you know, how come others went there didn't hear that? See, when he went there, I assume this must have been what happened. And when he was there, he, he heard all these problems that Chuyungi was must be sharing, all the difficulties he was going through in his huge church. And he took what he wants that already confirmed his predisposed conclusion. Took what he wants and come to strengthen his points with more facts. So he's not going out to learn, he's going out to look for facts to strengthen his conclusions. Another different person who went to the same trip, who has more open-mindedness, came back and said, Cho yong is now seeking to be a 100,000 sitting congreg- uh, auditorium. And he says, when he told his father-in-law that, the father-in-law said, please, let me die in peace. <laughs> Frightened. And he says, it's a tremendous new venture. So as I listen, I said, how is it possible that two different persons go to the same trip, comes back with different conclusions? The difference is in their inward inclination. One is more balanced, who hears exactly things as it is and reports exactly, without any predisposed conclusion. The other already has a mind frame. In certain narrow-mindedness, the eyes are so narrow that they could only see what they want to see. And so anything that fits into that frame, that's mine. Not willing to change. And that's the danger as we look into dreams and interpretation. The greatest danger that we have is blind spots. Things we do not see, which is why dreams are sometimes useful. If we come with an open heart to God and say, God teach me, make me, mold me as you will. God will teach we have to have a certain pliance, being pliable to God, so that God could mold our lives. And Nebuchadnezzar never had that. He had to have a second dream, and he had to have a terrible experience before he learned. We don't need that. 
He took that same dream. He said, wow, how oh good. I'm the head of girl. He forgot the ending of the dream. He only took the first part. He's the head of gold. That means his empire is the best. All these others are silver, iron and clay. Lesser than him. He must have been proud. That dream, he took it wrongly, built his ego bigger. His ego expanded. And then he built that huge statue. He never changed. He only apparently came to acknowledge the Lord after the judgment in his second dream. So a dream alone, remember dreams alone do not constitute direction. Direction comes from the word of God. There is no shortcut. You cannot say, wow, if dreams are so powerful, I'll just spend my whole life dreaming. Getting all my directions from dreams. Dreams do not direct that much. They only warn what may happen. It's just a chess game. You know, if you've got a good chess player, you give the position to a chess player, the chess player will say, this will be the conclusion. One look and you know who will lose, who will win. Provided both are equal. In that position. So, it can give you the conclusion of your position at the moment. That's why a dream, it projects to you what your road leads you. In other words, you could be walking in this direction and you cannot see that part there. In your dream, it shows you what will happen to that end of the road. Whether it's a dead end street or it's a street that leads anywhere else. Well, you're still here in your daily life. And you turn the wrong way, it shows you that way. So it gets you to turn back. To turn, as the book of Job 33 tells us, to turn us into the path of God. To humble us, to remove pride from us. So that we realize, hey, we need to walk humbly before God daily. To turn us on the pit. To turn us from destruction by the sword. That's what dreams are for. And uh, let's look now at the book of uh, Genesis as we conclude. Dreams and its interpretation. Chapter 41. Chapter 41. Verse 21, 22, Pharaoh now sharing, it says, When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So I awoke. Also I saw in my dream, and suddenly seven heads came up on one stalk, full and good. Then behold, seven heads withered, thin and blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. Now, Pharaoh had actually two dreams. Two dreams. And the fifth area, as we look at interpretation, why the second point is important, the background, circumstances. Because dreams tend to have a continual story. We can actually have repeated dreams, but repeated in a different way. The author of this book, Dreams and Interpretation, had an interesting dream where he had just left the church because he started teaching in that area and his church was not open to it. In the end, it was a church that ran by vote. They voted him out. So there was one dream where he saw a flood and the whole of Detroit was there where he was. And then he returned to his house in a, in a dream and he saw it empty. And that dream confirmed that there was nothing more for him in that place and he was to move on. Then subsequently he had this other dream where he was pushing a little pram. Pushing a little pram. And there was a little baby in the pram. And he pushed this pram until a house and, uh, and there's a wall there. Something like that. And he pushed his pram right up the house through the roof of the house what a dream sometimes the baby fell out and he catch the baby now that dream was telling him about his new discovery his new walk with God 
His, the new truth is understanding on the interpretation of dream. That baby represent the new things that God was doing in his life. The new spiritual truth when he was just like a little baby. And sometime after that, because he got to support his family, he took a position in, uh, in South America and uh, where he forgot about all these things and just put it aside and he, and he worked with some missionary groups for about a year or so. And he completely neglected, he didn't look into this area anymore. Then he had a dream. It was actually part two. See, dreams can be in parts. And in the dream, he was in this boat or something. And there was a girl there in that dream. A young girl in the dream. And uh, then the young girl fell down and into the water and was drowning. And finally he reached down and he saved this girl. Then he woke up and when he woke up, he, the immediate recognition was this. He realized that that girl represent, it was the same baby now grown up. That girl represents the truth that he had discovered on dreams and his interpretation. And he was neglecting it to the extent that the whole revelation of God almost died. You know, revelation can die, just like in the dark ages, in his life. And when that happened, I mean, sorrow would have happened in his spiritual life. That dream was a warning. I was telling him all of these new discoveries that he was having. Now notice in his dream, there were two parts. The little baby had grown up now. So as you notice in Pharaoh's dream, there was a reputation. So we note here the sequence of dreams. Reputation of dreams means seriousness. Something deeply rooted. We better deal with it. If you have a series of dreams that repeat themselves... Like, it may not occur since we started teaching last week. But previously, keep repeating in your life, please note it down. Note it down. It's important. Very important. They're serious. Just as like the repeated thing means it's, it's something that's, that's urgent, repeated. We must take note of that. Otherwise, it won't repeat so many times. Roadblocks in your dreams. And then, dreams can have uh, progression is the word for it. There's a progression in the author's life from the baby to the girl. So that is why you need to keep a dream book. Because our dreams progress reverse. And some of your dreams are continuations of stories that were in the past. Other dreams. So if you, you, if you are only a uh, uh, someone once in a while record your dream, you may not get the full picture. You may not get the full picture of your life from the spirit realm. As I mentioned, this author's dream about his old schoolmate, right? That was just isolated one incident. That was not progressive of progression dream. It was one incident that was trying to show him, hey, this is how you look to others. So in that dream, he saw his old schoolmate who was very dogmatic, which he never saw himself to be that. He thought he was gentle, kind, understanding, and uh, one who hears others. That is how he sees himself. But that dream was telling, this is how you look. He was seeing a mirror of himself. If not for that dream, he would not take note, hey, I'm now getting too dogmatic, better deal with this area in my life. But he began to realize, hey, I better deal with this area of my life because that's how others are looking at me now. This is how I look. Which, from inside, he looked at himself. Oh no, I'm not like that. His conscious mind is saying. So there is a different type of dream. It's an isolated kind of dream that reveals your circumstances as, uh, as it is. But there are other dreams that are progressive. Sequence of dreams. So in the fifth point, we see that reputation and progression of dreams needs to be taken note of. We need to have full record. The moment you become aware 
and sensitive to these areas of dreams, then you will have a richer life. I can guarantee you, you have a richer life. Areas that your conscious mind neglects, your subconscious mind brings to you. Your life becomes whole, more balanced. You sense an inner peace all the time that passes understanding. Because now wholeness is in you. So we're beginning to get points and interpret. So remember, this is your homework, right? Write down your dreams, progression, progressive dreams that you have. State some background if you can. If they're too personal, no, just put them aside. But we promise never to mention names, never to bring up things that are uh, too personal, but things that will help each other. Just like just now we interpret that dream, right? It help help each person. Now, this second dream that came, we have only two submitted so far, and uh, the burning wood. Oh, where do we start? Okay. <laughs> Okay, in a dream, there was a lot of chaos. These people, uh, three people, three men came to burn the place where I was. They managed to burn the place and things around. Then a man took a piece of burning wood and tried to hurt me. Which he succeeded. When he succeeded, he placed the burning wood on my shoulder. But there was no pain. The wood became soft and gave a feeling of softness. Now some details are missing here. That is why as you record dream important. If you can remember, that is you can see in dream. What were the clothes a person was wearing? Because in, in this dream that I just read out, if the person is in, in clothes that you normally wear in your work or wear in your daily life or normal life, whether it was loose clothes like things that you wear in your home or whether clothes that you wear outside. We all know we've got two sets of clothes, right? I don't wear like that in my home. <laughs> right? Put on my sh- shorts and t-shirts. That's all. Relax. So what you wear is important in your dream. It tells whether your dream is revealing about your personal life or your, your work in your office. So that's missing here, but we are attempt. So without that, no, it cuts down interpretation to 80%. Right? So a few other details missing, cuts down to 70%. Accuracy. So the accuracy drops. Right? We, are, we don't want to dogmatic about it. We want to be a learning experience for everybody. Just want to be very honest with you. Right? If the detail is missing, we drop down. And the more we know it, the deeper we are in relationship, the accuracy goes up to 100%. Right? Because 100% is when we could sit down, counsel in a dream, and you share your dream, and I could look, discern with my spirit, also, then we can get 100%. So, percentage drops. <laughs> but here, three people, notice, three, right? And the chaos there, Represents now part of this dream is in the past. Although I do not have the background listed, what the person was going through in this dream before this dream, I could discern from this dream that something has occurred because the person didn't mention what kind of dress, work, etc. Then it is either in the home life, work life, or personal life. There is some things and circumstances that have taken place that has completely destroyed or removed. But here, the wood touching the person's shoulder is important. A shoulder is a person where you carry responsibility. And so, it's speaking about a person's responsibility. Something, whether this is a family obligation, a work obligation, something that the person has a duty in. Some of us are born with duties. 
if you're the eldest in the family, you have, you have your duty to support all the others, especially if your family is not well off. We are born with duties. You can't help it. We just live with it and grow out of it. So, it is in reference to some sort of obligation and duties that a person has. Now, this, the dream here is a slight warning. There are some obligations and some duties that a person is avoiding because of the confusion that prevails in that situation. Again, I say dreams carry a warning. So the dream is trying to say, don't run from the chaos. See what the dream is saying. Perhaps in the conscious state, the person wants to run from the chaos. Thinking of running from that duty and obligation. But the dream is trying to say, don't run. Don't be afraid of facing that chaos. That you have a duty to perform. Because the end of the dream says, if you do it, if you take it, it will be pleasant to you. See, there's a warning here. Because I would say, gathering from this dream, just a small little uh, details here, that the, that, the, that the person wants to run, to flee from the chaos. The natural instinct when you look at chaos and fire and people burning your place is flee and run. They didn't mention whether the person did run a little bit or not. And whether this person catch up with the person. <laughs> These little details are missing. Or whether the person just stand there the chaos place burning and then the wood comes. Or whether a person gets running and a person chasing and then chuck, got a person. Never meant, not, details not mentioned. But that's mentioned a person is running. Now if in your dream you have running, 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 it's very important. It's telling you things that you must face. Things that you're running from. Whether it's a wild rhinoceros chasing you, or some shadow chasing you, is telling you you're running away from some things. You must face. If you face those things in your dream, they change. Dreams are warning. Those who are growing up, sometimes there's a biological effect and there's a soul effect. Where sometimes when you sleep, you have a falling sensation. Right? Now if it's a falling sensation without a dream, then it's biologically caused. Where your blood pressure drops and uh, so the sensation of falling is, uh, is interpreted. But if in your dream, you actually fall in some way, which those who, those who are growing up into adulthood tends to have a lot of that, because it's telling them that the psychological framework of their life, in other words, the foundation, they don't have a foundation in their life. See, all of us have life principles. I have principles by which I run my life and I make sure the principles come from God's word. We all have life principles. Principles are which we behave. I have my principle when I relate to another. What will be going too far? What won't be going too far? All of us have principles. Now what happens when a person grows in the adult life is those life principles sometimes are not formed yet. So they are going through life without life principles. It feels very aimless. Like in a, in a daze. And usually, you would have dreams of falling. Your dream is telling you, you don't have a foundation. Principle, a foundation of principles to base your life on. So it's all coming out in those dreams. So, so take note of all those things as you write down your dreams and uh, submit more of them right, for interpretation. <laughs> and uh, we'll be able to be better people. That's what we want to be more whole and more uh, established in what God wants us to be on the right road. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we praise you and thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, that this conscious life is not the only life we live. But there is a realm of the Spirit where we are in a subconscious state, oh God, but your Spirit still works. We thank you, Father, for the intricate parts of our soul and of our spirit. 
more intricate than the physical, biological function of our body, which is a marvel of miracle in itself. We thank you, Father, you're teaching us in this life harmonies. Harmonies of our soul. Harmonies in our spirit. So that we will be balanced, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that these truths of yours will cause your people to be at rest. To discover the rest in Christ. To discover the balance in life. That you establish each one in, Father. We give you glory, praise and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's rise together. And sing that song, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise God. Give Jesus a clap offering. God bless you.